Thank you for joining us again here at Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, John. Hey, hey. So, today, uh, typically the first of the month, we were doing question and answer. Um, I'm going to try to stir some stuff up for you guys for a while. And um, we had some questions this month, but one of them that we continuously um, had so we thought that we would make one show about it and just address it, um, is the difference between the different diets. So what we decided to do was try to take um, some of the most common uh, diet or way of eating um, that people do these days and then just kind of address them, go through the differences um, of what they are. And uh, so... Yeah, talk about our personal experiences if we tried them. Uh, we'll try to kind of check with the questions that we've got related around them to uh, make sure we address them all uh, the best we can. But from a high level, we're talking paleo, primal, low carb, and then of course keto, and we'll try to do our best to compare it. So if you have questions along the way and you want to ask them, uh, feel free to either drop them in the chat. Uh, if you feel like you're interrupting, or if you can easily just uh, you know interrupt us. So to start with, we just thought we'd kind of show, uh, and basically if you can get a mental image in your head, uh, a couple of rings, maybe think Olympics, and how the rings overlap, because there is a lot of overlap between all of these eating styles. I don't know generically how much they're all the same, but just kind of keep in mind that as we go through this, we're going to talk about where the overlap is. And if you can picture in your mind, you know, th kind of three or four circles overlapping each other, that's kind of what we're going to paint uh, that picture in your mind today. Yep. So I thought it would be good to start with Atkins because Atkins probably had the most mental mind share. Uh, it was a very popular diet early on. And I think it actually... Maybe I mean I would I would say I would argue that paleo was probably on the scene already and primal was probably started, but neither one of them had anything on Atkins. Atkins just came out of well, I guess when 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 did you hear about Atkins? Um, so I actually started doing Atkins in about mid nineties. Mid nineties, yeah. yeah. That sounds about right. I think his first book came out in the seventies. If I remember correctly, um, and then he kind of revamped it again, late 80s, early 90s. Um, yeah, so Atkins is one of those ones that is very well defined because it has a person who backs it 100%, in, whereas paleo is a more generic term that is not necessarily for one person. Atkins is Dr. Atkins. Right. So since you've done Atkins and I haven't, why don't you kind of give us a little uh, kind of overview of what Atkins is? Okay. Um, so with these, I kind of thought that I would, I mean, since we are Ketonian Corner, um, talk about it a little bit, but then kind of uh, give the comparisons uh, to the ketogenic diet as well. So with Atkins, um, they have it structured in four phases. They have phase one, which is they call the induction phase. And it is uh, 20 grams of carbs or less per day for two week period. Um, during that time, you eat a high fat plus a high protein um, with very low carbs, and mostly those are like uh, the green leafy uh, vegetables. So very similar to your ketogenic diet. Um, whereas we would not do just a two week phase; we would extend that to the life of it, but. Um, the, the main difference with this induction phase versus ketogenic is that they do a, a high protein, and that is not something that we promote um, as ketogenic. So uh, those are really two of the, the big differences is that the Atkins only lasts for the two weeks and um, that it's also a, a high protein. So how does that induction phase uh, align with just the term low carb diet? Um, so again, it's low carb. Really, is just is, is just that um, is that they have you limit the carbohydrates, um, but they 
in the low carb diet itself, there's not really structure for anything else. So um, the emphasis is, is reducing carbohydrates, but kind of let you do whatever you want with the protein and the fat. Um, whereas with Atkins, they do give you the structure for all three of those macronutrients. Um, so low carb may is very is, is Atkins for all intents and purposes, just not as uh, well defined as his right. different phases. So you started to talk about in, in introduction. What's the next phase? So um, the second phase that they take you into is called balancing. And with the balancing, um, you slowly start introducing things back. So um, you would you would bring in nuts, um, some uh, of your low carb uh, vegetables, um, and then you would also bring back some in, uh, some of the fruit. So during the balancing, um, you're actually uh, raising your carbohydrate count from the 20 up to I think. I think this one in the balancing goes to 50 um, carbohydrates. So in comparison to the standard American diet, it's still a low carb, but in comparison to itself or other low carb diets, it's actually uh, raising the carbohydrate count. So um, once you do that, uh, this one, this phase, um, it, they kind of leave it up to you how long you're in that. Um, and then you go into phase three, which they they call fine tuning. Um, with this one, you're going to stay in this until you reach your goal weight, um, and you'll still um, you're, you're going to add some carbs back into it. Um, and how how this one works is that as you add the carbs back in. Um, once your weight starts slowing down or your weight loss starts slowing down, that's where you know your threshold is and so you back those carbs back off. Um, that's the longest phase that you stay in for Atkins. And then again, um, you stay there until you hit your goal weight. And once you hit that, then you go into stage four, or phase four, um, and that's your maintenance phase. And then um, this is where they uh, tell you to start adding things like sweet potatoes and um, some of your, I'm going to say starchier vegetables, but lower lower starch vegetables than, say, a regular potato or rice or something. But um, And then that's where they, they tell you that you would maintain for, for the remainder of your life is in that phase. And that concept overlaps with the primal blueprint and the fact that they talk about uh, a carb curve and once you get into your maintenance uh, and basically where your goals are, how depending on your exercise versus what your goals are, you may be somewhere in between that, you know, zero to 50 and then wherever you find your means. So there is a little overlap there. So some of the other things uh, we have, what about uh, artificial sweets? So uh, with Atkins, they really do not focus on ingredients. Um, there is no emphasis on eliminating um, some of the, the artificial sweeteners that are, I would call the chemical uh, sweeteners, so like your stevia, or sorry, Splenda, aspartame, those kind of things. There's really not too much mention. Um, it, it really is more of a, if it fits, then you can eat it. Um, they're, they allow processed foods. Um, so in Atkins, you would be eating like their Atkins shakes, their Atkins bars, um, protein bars. You know, again, it, they don't really focus on ingredients, so that's another huge difference between ketogenic and Atkins. Um, and then another one that comes up a lot is dairy. Atkins allows dairy, right? Atkins does allow dairy. They do. Um, Where uh, a primal would would make it, they would specify full fat dairy and a paleo would basically say that there's a lot of irritants within dairy and that you should eliminate it. Yeah. So, so uh, why did you, uh, why, why did you shift from Atkins? Uh, to be honest, um, being on Atkins when I was in the induction phase, and unfortunately I, I never really did research back then, so I didn't understand why this was happening. But during the induction phase, I would lose weight, 
but then as soon as I started introducing other foods, it would stop immediately. Um, and when I say that, I, I did not go as far as doing nuts or anything, just adding green beans uh, to my diet, I would start losing, or I'd stop losing weight. Um, so because my goal back then was to lose weight, I would stay in the induction phase for longer, and I had everyone screaming at me that that was unhealthy, and so I became scared and just went off the diet completely, um, figuring that it was just something that didn't work for me. And uh, in hindsight, I, I understand what was going on uh, now, but unfortunately back then. Right, hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so if we move up into paleo, we talked about some of the overlaps. Paleo is can probably considered low carb um, also, but paleo as a just generic one line statement is basically trying to eat foods that that would have existed uh, when you know a long time ago. That's why some people refer to it as the caveman diet. Uh, so again, it aligns the same with Atkins on the meat, vegetables. Uh, it includes nuts uh, and root vegetables also. So there is some overlap there. There are multiple different versions of the paleo diet depending on who you ask. So when if you just Google paleo, there'll be lots of different opinions on the foods you can or can't have. So there's the largest amount of of uh, differences within within, uh, within that, but uh, uh, Cordain and Rob Wolf are probably the two big names in there. The other thing you might see along there is a more strict paleo, which would be like a whole nine or a whole thirty, and those are much stricter on removing all of the fruit, uh, removing a lot of the sugar, um, and, and it's a say more about getting rid of processed oils, the salts. I think they even limit alcohol. Um, I don't remember 100% about that. But but basically, it's, there's a lot of overlap um, from the low carb piece of that. But then it's a lot more strict, in my opinion. And uh, I ate paleo probably for quite a while before I started um, re kind of introducing some of the stuff and, sh and shifted maybe over more to the primal. So when it comes to primal, there's a lot more overlap with paleo. Um, before we get into primal, I just want to throw out one more thing because of my background and I, and I do uh, group fitness at Gold's Gym. Um, I teach Les Mills, and Les Mills nutrition is even more generic than paleo, and it's just basically limiting the processed carbs. Um, and then there's two two pieces of the Les Mills nutrition program. One is just a, a, a lifestyle, which really is all about uh, limiting processed anything. And then the other is a 21-day challenge, which is actually calorie restriction. It's, it's more of the bodybuilding mindset revolving around having five small meals, uh, much more, uh, uh, I, wanna, I don't want to say bro science because that has a negative con condensation, con whatever the word is, condensation, condensation. but kind of gives you a, a ballpark. So the less most nutrition, a little bit more wide open, um, so overlap with with a lot of the paleo and, and primal from a methodology standpoint. So uh, how, did, how did I do on paleo? Is there anything I missed on that or anything you'd like to add? Because you've never really necessarily done a strict paleo. Because um, I'd like to mention autoimmune, autoimmune, but I don't know how to kind of bring that in. Because auto, the autoimmune protocol kind of could really be any of these. But that is a more advanced topic revolving around looking at re like super limiting all of your all of the irritants and then slowly adding them back in. So much like that Adkins between that phase one and two, yep. it would be you would 
completely eliminate nightshades. You'd completely eliminate dairy. You'd completely eliminate all, all grains. And then you would slowly start to add those back in. So a lot of people, when they say strict paleo, they're actually saying the autoimmune protocol underneath paleo. And so would that be for people who specifically already know that they have that or that they have, um, they're having issues that they don't really know what is going on? Is that what they use, the paleo autoimmune? Yeah. Yeah, so just for the question, so when when would I personally like recommend that? Because it's super strict. It's very hard to follow in my mind. Um, it would be somebody who is allergic to something. So let's take, for example, my son. He kept breaking out in these little hives, and we weren't 100% sure what it was. Well, we were lucky enough to realize that with a blood test that he's actually very hypersensitive to mold, so you know any any leaves in the garden, that stuff. You know, we you know, it plays out out inside. So we never could we never could find a correlation. But now that we've limited him to stay out of the garden, stay out of the burn pile where there can be wet leaves that start to to get you know that moldiness, that white powdery stuff on him. Uh, he's been way way better. But I had planned on doing that, that strict autoimmune protocol to try to narrow it down if, if his blood test didn't come back saying that he was allergic to something. So it's more about sensitivity, I think, because a lot of times blood tests will flag things where you have a intolerance, but if you have a sensitivity, uh, they don't do as good a job. And that's just my personal, I guess, anecdotal evidence. I don't think any of that's super, super uh, defined when it comes down to that. I'm sure Doctors would tell you their blood tests are perfect, but I know there's plenty of people who have a intolerance to gluten who don't don't show as celiac. Yep. So I, I we kind of way, way down in the in the in the weeds there, didn't we? No, no. I think it's. I mean, I think it's a good thing to point out that there are even within one style of eating, there's still variances based on individual need and individual uh, desires for the end goal. Yeah. So much like we've talked about keto, um, there are the, some of the, the people I was most intrigued with at, at KetoCon were that, that ke- carnivore keto, yeah. for lack of a better term. And they're eating a lot more protein than I would have ever imagined. So there's even, you know, variations along the way. So now before we get to primal, I want to, you know, fully lay it out there. I'm primal blueprint certified. I've spent the majority of my educational life looking at this stuff as a hobby in primal blueprint. So I'm obviously, uh, calling myself primal more than any of these other ones. Um, now to be, to, you know, to relate it back to keto, Keto is a principle within primal. It is one of the more strict primal um, principles. Uh, so you can definitely be keto uh, on primal. Uh, there are even primal blueprint books about being keto. The next one coming out is actually about that. Um, now, the other side of that is it's also a little bit more flexible than paleo. So um, obviously uh, being Keto, you're much more strict on the amount of, you know, having much more fat, less carbs, but it's a little bit, there's a little bit more of a blueprint as opposed to, to a strict eating style. So, so if I would talk about primal, I would say it's a lot more than a eating strategy. It's, it's a lifestyle. And I, and I hate saying that because it's, I sound like a commercial, <laughs> but Primal is not paleo. They're, they're different approaches. You can have dairy on primal. You can eat. Uh, they talk about how the, the different different fruit, and they definitely want to go for berries more than you know a sugar lit, a sugar intense fruit. But uh, root vegetables, um, you'll you'll often see primal uh, where they will uh, have. Sweet potatoes, as an example. You, you really, there are some people who are paleo that might throw those in, but it's, it's a more of a sparing thing. We've talked about that before. 
but it is very micronutrient um, based. The entire program cares a lot about micronutrients. Uh, they care a lot about the quality of food, um, and they care a lot about being fat adapted. So where you'll see in primal, where there will be uh, things that you would look at that may not be ketogenic, like a recipe, for example, but you'll find that somebody in, in a primal methodology will get their body and concentrate on, on becoming fat adapted, and then they may switch in and out of ketosis more than somebody who is uh, strong into, into keto. So you'll find some people who stay within ketosis and some people that, that, that don't. And it really depends on the uh, amount of exercise. So you'll find a lot of times cross, I'm going to generalize and say CrossFit because that's a lot of mind share. You'll see a lot of those people who will be either paleo or primal, but you'll see their carb intake will be more than, than, uh, than you would think for, for those two. And that's because they are trying to re replenish. And we've mentioned that before. So, What's not food related or, or what is very similar sorry, on the food related is, you know, no, no processed, limited the processed, all, uh, the bar, you know, bars will have nuts in them. There, there are some convenience, they call them convenience things or emergency meals revolving around primal. They even have a uh, primal blueprint uh, protein powder. However, it is not like a standard way. It's, uh, it's uh, definitely uh, the uh, protein is from collagen sources, and it's much more on the uh, good fats. Uh, so the micronutrient ratio wouldn't be like basically a protein shake you would get um, at a gym. So the one thing uh, they do add kind of in primal or, or give you like a uh, I would say a get out a free card per se is every once in a while you'll see them referred to as sensible indulgence. So that would be things like dark chocolate. Um, there'll be some references to moderate alcohol, but they're kind of strict, the dry wine kind of things. Um, but that would be, you know, they, they call them indult indulgences for a reason. So. Also, you'll find much more vegetable intake um, in a primal blueprint style than uh, you'll see in, I'd argue somewhat, uh, green, leafy, green leafy vegetables are, are definitely promoted. Uh, same restrictions as keto on no sugar, no grains, no industrial seed oils. The one thing about beans and lagoons is you'll find that they give a, I'm going to call it a yellow light on peanuts. Um, they, they, they went back and forth. When I first started Primal Blueprint, they were, they were no peanuts, no peanut butter, even just natural peanut butter. And later they've kind of said, you know, if it works for you. Yeah, so, that's kind of how keto started. Is keto starting to go that way? I yeah. know that they are much more on the uh, on the you'll you don't see peanuts a lot in keto stuff. You'll see macadamia nuts. You'll see yeah. Um, it's I, some of the bigger name people who are in the keto community are starting to be a little bit more lax with that, but I think it's because there's a lot of people doing the in one experiment that it may not affect them. And so I think they're kind of coming around that, you know, this really is an individualized thing and everybody does not react the same. So they're, they're kind of letting up on being so strict uh, with just blankly saying no. So. Um, moving from completely not related to any diet, Primal uh, has an entire uh, fitness pyramid. Uh, we kind of talked about that. It's been months now when we talked about, you know, my uh, my, my fitness uh, 
for me personally. It's been, like I said, three months. But it basically is sprinting every once in a while, every seven to ten days. Uh, so that would be like the every once in a while thing. Lift heavy things one to, or I think it's one to three times a week. And then the fun aspect, doing a lot of low frequent, low, low frequency. That's not right. Low level cardio, but higher frequency, playing with your kids, walking, hiking, and those type of things. Uh, they also promote sleep, sun, expo- sun exposure, and I mentioned play already. So they have rules to live by that are like uh, like a five action item guidelines that, that and they have a slower transition period. They have a 21 day program that gets you from where you are on a standard American diet to more of a paleo life. They, they don't uh, they don't have you bam start tomorrow. Uh, they they do. But they're not like me. <laughs> well, that's okay. There's 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 a pros and cons. They do right off the bat say eliminate the standard American diet, those type of foods, the high rich foods. Um, and then they basically kind of walk you through trying to shop and learn how to cook, uh, how to order at the restaurants. And then basically the action item number three is just starting to make better choices and then starting to add the exercise. And then their last one is more, it's not necessarily meditation, but they talk a, a lot about uh, slowing down. Uh you know, in basically slowing down, enjoying yourself a little bit more, trying to limit the stress, those, those type of things. So there is plenty of information about the 21-day program that they have, uh, and then they've got basically a, an action item for each day in that 21-day program. So it's way more detailed than that, but you can kind of get an understanding of how you're seeing a little variety across all of those. So what are we missing? Uh, well, you've got the calorie restriction. So you're low fat. Oh, um, so primal is definitely not calorie restriction. Yeah. So I guess there's a whole entire series that would fall not necessarily in any of these overlapping things, which would be like, Man, we're gonna catch some. I'm gonna catch some crap for this, but I'm gonna go ahead and say Weight Watchers yeah. is a calorie restriction diet. Now, whether you have, there's so many calorie restriction stuff that you could lump into that, so I'm, I'm not necessarily just picking on Weight Watchers, but I would say Paleo Primal and even Atkins, none of those have a strong. You'll you'll find maybe some people in the Paleo community or maybe even Primal when you talk about uh, you know certain scenarios where it'd be calorie restriction, but for the most part, you'll not see that as a guiding principle in any of these diets. All these diets are about listening to your body, um, changing what you eat, not how much you eat, those those type of things. So calorie restriction, i got to be honest, I've never done. Well, you're lucky because it's the worst. You feel terrible all the time because you are always hungry. Yeah, and I, I've, I've been lucky. I've never tried that. Yeah, it, it, it really is not an enjoyable thing. Um, I was lucky when I was in high school and ate like crap. I was running cross country and doing all kinds of stuff. People like me hated people like you in high school. <laughs> Probably. I'll admit it. But I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I, I, put on, I didn't put on a freshman 15 because I was really active in college. But I definitely got a internship 15 <laughs> from from uh, full full uh, full caffeine uh, Mountain Dews and playing video games and sitting at a desk all the time. And that's yeah. I think I mentioned that when I started my primal or I would say my gym when I started doing the gym stuff. That was when I was like, holy moly, where'd all this where all this, this, why do these pants not fit anymore? Yeah, calorie restriction for me 
um, has got to be the worst. And I think the first one, the first diet that I went on, I was 11. Um, my mother was a frequent dieter, so every new thing she did, I did. Um, and my first one was the Cambridge diet. It was horrible. It was these awful shakes. That that's all you did was drink these shakes every day. Um, there was no solid. Well, I take that back. I think for dinner I was able to have some vegetables. Sensible. Yeah. Thing. No, no, no. It, there was it was vegetables. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Which I'm not a big vegetable fan, so that was probably the worst diet in the world for me. But yeah, it was uh, calorie restriction is awful. Um, not only because you are miserable and you're hungry all the time, but it's really bad for your body. And I don't think that people really understand it. Um, and you and I raising talk, your cortisol. Yeah. yeah. Well, it causes your um, metabolic rate to plummet, and then your body is constantly believing it's not going to get enough food, and so you're you really are truly damaging your your metabolism by doing a calorie restriction. Um, and you and I have talked about it before, and I've gotten a little bit of flack from saying calories don't matter, um, which I guess I should rephrase that and learn how to say that a little differently, because calories, although they do matter, they don't matter in the sense of what most people believe that they matter. Yeah. Um, I've also made that blanket statement yeah. that calories don't matter. Um, and I would rephrase that to say directionally, what you eat has a much bigger impact on your calories yeah. than the simple math that always gets touted yeah. uh, overall revolving around what my Fitbit says I burned calorie-wise versus yeah. uh, it's, it's funny. There's no exercise equipment that I've seen yet that says, well, what's your standing metabolic rate? <laughs> and then I'll subtract what you did cardio-wise. No, it's always well, you burned this many calories. And I'm like, well, I would have burnt calories had I not done this. So, you know, yeah. none, none of that is a makes, a makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. So for everybody's clarification, I think if we do say it, and we are going to try to, to rephrase that when we make mention of calories, but our calories don't matter is more of don't try to restrict them and eat less of them, but we're also not saying you can eat as many as you want. So, um, just kind of throw that out there, but. Right. So I would say all three of these, the big ones we talk about, Atkins, Paleo, and Primal, their goal is to make you full and satiated so that you are not hungry all the time. Right. But within all of these, you could probably find some type of macronutrient ratio where you can consume more calories than you think you're getting, especially revolving around. I think for me the easiest thing is nuts. I can like I can put down two thousand calories in nuts without a problem. Yeah. And well, and it, I think it goes back to that mindless eating, right? Yeah. Like if you oh, for find sure. something, yeah. it's no different than a potato chip bag. If you would have been able to sit down in front of the TV and consume an entire bag of potato chips because you were doing it out of repetition, you're going to do the same thing or have the potential to do the same thing with any healthy food too. So. I mean, you just, you just got to keep all of that stuff in mind. But as long as you're eating to your body signals and you're not just eating to eat, you're going to be less apt to do something like that because you're not going to be hungry a lot. So, so we only have about five more minutes. So if we were, if we were going to give people keywords to search on... Um, to try to do a little more research on their own if they're interested in any of those. Uh, Primal Blueprint, just have to search Primal Blueprint. I mean, there's Mark, Mark Siston is the person who is, is the name behind that. Um, the reason he didn't go paleo is because he wanted to put a stronger framework around that. Rob Wolf is probably right there next to Mark from a, they were, they did a lot together early on, um, and they still promote each other's stuff. But Rob Wolf is probably the bigger name in paleo. The other ones were the Whole9 and Whole30, which a little bit more strict version of that. And then um, Cordain's really more of a, he was early, early. And uh, 
I guess I didn't really think I through this very well, but what's the uh, what's the um, I think if you just Googled that, you, you would find some information on that. But he was he was early on. And I don't even know if he really called himself paleo. He might have been uh, just kind of earlier before they even started labeling it. Uh, the other one that was early before they started labeling it is the there's a there was a book that's pretty old called The Warrior Diet, which was an introduction into basically paleo, but it also has intermittent fasting based on warrior tribes that was was uh, really popular for a while with a I would say, I would say had a cult following but there was a lot of people that had a lot of success on that but it got overpowered by Atkins uh, that that has recently been re-released and that's an interesting read if you want to it doesn't really fall into any of those but it's it, it's an interesting look at fasting before fasting had any uh, scientific things behind it so it was very, very uh, ahead of its time. And then Atkins, man, uh, Atkins, although um, he's passed away, they are, is his, is his wife or his daughter? What, how does that work? Do you happen to know? Um, Definitely the same nurse, the same, same the foundation yeah. lives on. Well, Jacqueline Everstein um, actually was his head nurse uh, who worked with him on that. Um, but he, she is not with the Atkins Foundation any longer. Um, there is a doctor who took it over, and I was going to say that it was um, well, Dr. I guess. Weston, a Westman, but I, I think that is inaccurate. And then, so, but definitely Adkins.com is the, I mean, there's, there's yeah. no way you can miss Googling Adkins. Yep. Uh, and then uh, Le Leslie A. a Price, is, that how you, is it Leslie? What's the Price Foundation's? Pi Price Foundation kind of falls right in the middle of all of these, with it, which is a, it, which is uh, a whole nother, I guess, uh, foundation that would be right in the middle of all these diets, which is about whole foods. They allow grains if they're sprouted is the main difference there. But they uh, they are big into the quality of food. Uh, they definitely are promote you know farm farm you know grass fed beef, uh, uh, free range chickens and, and all that stuff. So there's a lot of information out there, and they've got a whole that foundation has a, a lot of good information. I, I was actually looking at uh, when we were struggling with uh, having my son. Uh, breastfeeding. At first, he was so big, so fast. We were trying to supplement, and I didn't want to use crappy formula. They've they've got even how to make your own formula, so it yeah. has a macronutrient ratio that's more like mother's milk. Uh, if you don't not familiar with it, all of the stuff that you buy in the store is, for the most part, not even close from a macronutrient ratio is actual uh, milk. So. How's that for a tangent? Anything <laughs> else? Uh, we only have one more minute, so uh, I don't think we had any questions.